Let's chat briefly about simplifying radicals. We're going to focus on simplifying numerical radical expressions. Uh, in future sections, you may deal with simplifying algebraic radical expressions. Uh, these rules will transcend uh, working with numbers because algebra uh, is focusing on working with numbers as well. Those numbers are just represented as letters. And so these rules will apply uh, when you get to uh, future sections where you're having to simplify radical expressions, ra uh, algebraic radical expressions. So here, the rules for simplifying radicals are, are these three right here. The first rule is that there can be no perfect square factors in the radicand. The second rule, there can be no fractions in the radicand. And the third and final rule is that you cannot have any radicals in the denominator of a fraction. So I have three examples that sort of address each of these rules. Let's work these kind of carefully, step by step. The square root of 75. If I am correct, I know that 75 is the same as 25 times 3. And I know that 25 is a perfect square because I know my times tables, 5 times 5 is 25. So the square root of 75 can be rewritten in this way. All right, we know that 75 is 25 times 3, so we can say the square root of 75 is the square root of 25 times 3. There is a property called the product property of radicals. It's very self-explanatory. The product property of radicals means that we can separate this product under the radicand as a factor of, I'm sorry, as a product of radicals. So the square root of 25 times 3 is the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. This is just another way to rewrite it. Now, the square root of 25, we already said, is 5, so I can simplify this further. The square root of 3, on the other hand, I can't simplify. So we have 5 times the square root of 3. 5 times the square root of 3. Under the radical, there are no perfect square factors, except for 1, obviously. So the square root of 1, we'll be doing that forever if we keep trying to take out a square root of, of 1. Um, but uh, 3, we can't take the square root of 3 um, to get any rational, or any rational number. That's an irrational number. So 5 radical 3 is equal to the square root of 75, but here we have smaller numbers to work with. This is going to make our algebraic process later on much easier for us. Rule number two, no fractions in the radicand. Oh no, we've got the square root of four ninths here. Well, I can break this down just like there's a product property of radicals, there's a quotient product. I'm sorry, there's a quotient property of radicals. So this can be rewritten as the square root of four over the square root of nine. We know the square root of four, that's two. We know the square root of nine, that's three. So our radical four ninths is the same as two thirds, radical two-thirds. The last example here, no radicals in the denominator. Yikes, we've got one over the square root of two. Here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to rationalize the denominator. That's a fancy phrase to say, I want my denominator to be a rational number. I can't have a denominator that's an irrational number, so let me rewrite this. One over the square root of two times one. Well, that's a little ridiculous. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change its value. All right, so multiplying by 1, I'm just going to get 1 over the square root of 2. Maybe there's another way that I can write the number 1. What if I wrote it as 1 over 1? Well, that still gives me the same thing. 1 times 1 is 1. Radical 2 times 1 is radical 2. I didn't change it at all. Okay, so let me think of something else. How can I multiply the square root of 2 to get a rational number? Well, if I multiply the square root of 2 by the square root of 2, that is going to give me a rational number. Because the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, using this property. That means I have a rational number in my denominator. But I can't just multiply the denominator by the square root of 2. I have to multiply by 1, represented as the square root of 2 divided by itself. So when you see a radical in the denominator, you can go about it two ways. Maybe you can simplify a fraction, all right? Maybe you can multiply by 1, represented as the radical in the denominator, over itself.
this gives us a perfect square in the denominator. 1 times radical 2 is radical 2. Radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4. All right, but I can take the square root of 4, and so can you. The square root of 2 over 2, and that would be our final answer. So here are the three rules. No perfect square factors in the radicand, no fractions in the radicand, and no radicals in the denominator. And here are three examples that you can use to make sure that you understand this amazing process of simplifying radicals.